right, um, we do have a special guest, as I said. And uh, what we do, if you haven't been here, we, our guests are our heroes and our rock stars. And we welcome them as a rock star. So uh, we do a tradition that we have the rock star introduction. And before I introduce my guest, I would like you to first stand up. This is my favorite part of the event. Yeah? I'm not going to ask you to do yoga stuff, so don't worry. She is beautiful inside out and very humble person. She is a global sensation. She was a model, a supermodel in the in the supermodel era that we uh, for ten over ten years, and uh, she has uh, been a columnist, uh, a TV host, and a lot of other uh, an actress. And then she is now uh, started her own entrepreneurial journey, and that's why we love we love her that she's here uh, with uh, with skincare Emma's Emma S skincare. So uh, please give a very warm welcome to the fantastic Emma Wicklund! We usually start the interview with, with asking the background. Like, uh, who is Emma? Where did it all start? Where were you born? What did your parents do? <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm born in Stockholm, outside of Stockholm, but my my father was kind of doing career in the industry business. Uh, he was uh, at IBM, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we lived in Stockholm uh, when I was born, and then we moved to Söderham when I was six, and he moved working with Kokums, which is another industrial kind of uh, wood, <laughs> forest, and uh, trä industry. And we were only in Söderhamn for a year and a half, and then I was eight years old, we moved to Hubskvarna mm -hmm. uh, in Småland. And that's where I grew up, literally. Uh, and my father, you know, my mom was kind of the generation that tagged along. Mm -hmm. uh, but she always worked, and she kind of studied while we were kids. Yeah. So uh, How many siblings do you have? I have an older sister, she's okay. three and a half. Okay. Um, so, but it was nice, it was good, you know, when you're a kid you don't like to, you know, some people say kids like changes, mm -hmm. but um, I li really liked it in Söderham. <laughs> I just started uh, first uh, degree, mm -hmm. Etan, yeah. and I loved my class, you know, I was so excited to start school, mm -hmm. and I literally only went there for one semester and then we, we moved, and I remember that was quite traumatic, traumatical. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to move again. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, it also, I think, helped me for the future to, to switch uh, safe grounds yes, yeah. and move. So you, you went to school in uh, Hux, what was the name again? Try again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I'm very bad with names. Uh, Hyskvarna. Hyskvarna, yes, yeah. outside Jönköping. Yeah. It's a very big difference though. For you guys who don't know it, uh, yeah, someone is nodding. It's yeah. very important if you live in Hyskvarna or Jönköping. You can't see the difference really. But for us it was. <laughs> so I lived there until I went to school there um, until I moved to Stockholm again when I started my modeling career. Okay, were, you, were there any instances or nice stories in school that you want to talk about? Did you like school? Uh, I liked school. I really liked school. And I think also why I liked school because um, when we moved to Hubskvarna, we really stayed in a house very far away from the rest of my schoolmates which was a bit sad because she didn't have that daily connection. So it's a bit sad. I was quite lonely. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this was before we had the, <laughs> the smartphones that the kids love today. So I, I was quite lonely and I played a lot. You know, we come from, coming from Sweden, which is, you know, you have a great opportunity to go to school. You know, we have quite a safe and secure background. Mm -hmm. A lot of those girls, I remember working with some girls from, great girls from former Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. And... They literally sent their money home. They supported their family. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of these, some Brazilian girls came from quite poor backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, there was a different attitude. Uh, but normally we would, you know, we would have quite, we had fun together. Mm -hmm. We would see each other on the fashion shows during like Milan Fashion, New York, uh, Paris Fashion Weeks, and then we hang and yeah. it, it was good. You uh, miss it because you stopped. Before we say why did you, did you stop? <laughs> I got <laughs> old. <laughs> it's like with athletes and models, you know it's going to end. Um, 
So, do I miss it? Um, some parts I miss. Um, traveling like that. Um, and, and the money sometimes, because it was really <laughs> well paid. <laughs> and, and the creative people that I had the chance to work with every day, you know, with the designers and the, the, the best in the world, photographers. It's beautiful when you see the team of, of a photo shoot. Your picture comes out mm -hmm. and you know, okay, you're the model, but then you had that fabulous light and you had the great photographer and the location and the set designer. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, um, it was a very creative environment and it was great to be there. And I can miss that environment yeah. sometime. But uh, maybe you have that a bit now too, the creative part, but we'll get there before you yes. <laughs> So uh, you, you, you wanted to end it because of the age. The age the and also, you know, modeling is definitely something you do when you're young for a couple of years, mm -hmm. when you do it full time. I mean, there are not that many models working at my age today. Maybe Kate Moss, but she's the only <laughs> one that still, she does everything still. Yeah. But no, I was ready to go to the next step. You know, you, you travel a lot. You ha I have 180 traveling days a year, which is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And you miss having your friends around, normal social life when you kind of, I was, you never know what you're going to happen the next day. Um, I'm a kind of a routine person. And the modeling business is definitely, no, not one day is like the other one. one yeah. And you get used to that too, but I kind of missed a bit of a routine and I would say safety or yeah. one place in my life. You're describing Stockholm or Sweden now. Yes. Routine <laughs> <safety>. <laughs> That's why I went back. <laughs> and I always kind of, I loved Stockholm and I loved Sweden. Yeah. And I, I always kind of felt that, you know, I was going to come back here. Mm -hmm. So you went, you, you were, before moving back to Stockholm... You were in Paris? Paris, Paris. and New York. Yeah, New York. And, but New York. Paris was my, definitely my base for yeah. 12 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> and uh, is there a city that you love more than Stockholm? One of them? I love more than Stockholm? Yeah. Don't say anyone. Why? Don't break my heart. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, you know, I love Paris. I, I do love Paris. And Paris is a tough city to live in because if you don't speak French, I had to learn French, yeah. of course. And then... Paris, you can't accept Paris. Paris accepts you. And it takes a while. I don't know if people are nodding here. Most people, after a year, they hate Paris. Mm. They think it's so horrible because you don't get into it. But once you get into it, it's no better place in the world. <laughs> the, s the smell, the people, uh, the noise, the traffic, the, hu the buildings, the light. You know, just yeah. a f uh, it's, it's magic. Yeah. Mm. But you left that... Stockholm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So we hear it's better. <laughs> I think I, especially depending what life you're living. Yeah. Now I you know, I have to have kids mm -hmm. and to be able to, you know, to have family. Mm -hmm. Stockholm any day before Paris. Okay. Definitely. Tweet, so it's a different tweet part tweet of your one, life. Not the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you moved you moved back to Stockholm and what happened after you moved back? You stopped modeling totally or did you do anything here? Actually, literally what happened, I didn't get the jobs I was supposed to. Uh, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> and that was tough even if you knew it was going to happen. So I took a decision when I was about 29 that, you know, I'm going to stop this now and do something, something totally different. I need to leave because you'd normally it's nothing worse than you hang on to something when you've been on the top mm -hmm. and you know you're not going to get there again. You just, you better do something else. Yeah. <laughs> so I retired. For modeling. For modeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moved back to Stockholm and I, it was very frustrating and I, I really had a tough time. In because Stockholm. I know no. with myself kind of not knowing what I was going to do when I grow up <laughs> <laughs> and being 30 years old and literally everyone else of my friends, they finished university, they were in the beginning of their career and I was literally at the end of mine and I had no idea what I was going to do <laughs> and I, that, that's the truth, I had no idea. Uh, I knew I was going to do something so I wasn't worried about that and I had to work with television parallel mm -hmm. when I was modeling here in Sweden uh, and I always thought, oh, I always did that because I thought I can do that afterwards. Yeah. Um, so there was a plan B. Yeah. Um, and then you, I. You were. Uh, what were What were your uh, shows about? Oh, I did. Actually, in the 1992, when TV3, the first commercial, Stian Beck, <laughs> when they actually launched the first commercial um, channel in Sweden, was for Channel 3. I yeah. did a talk show, and you know, just the fact that I actually did a talk show 
I'm so ashamed when I look at it. I, but at that point, it was like, great, fun, why not, you know? <laughs> uh, so in, that was in 1991, 92. Mm -hmm. And then I did some other shows that I was presenting things like um, Superstars, which was athletes competing. Then I did some um, Baby Boom when I moved back, mm -hmm. when my kids were born. Uh, that was for Channel 4. Mm -hmm. um, but then the whole climate of television, of course, changed. Um, and I didn't feel really comfortable doing it either. But luckily, what happened to me when I, I moved back to Sweden, yeah. I wanted to do something different. I, I went to university and I studied literature science <laughs> <laughs> for one year. And that was something totally different. Just to kind of broaden my mind a little bit. Yeah. And meet some new people. At Stockholm University. Yeah. yeah. After one year, I really realized, though, that lyric analyzing was not no. my thing. <laughs> 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 so... Um, and I, during that year, I met my husband. Okay. Something good came out. And I got pregnant, so okay. it went really fast. So and, and then our first kid was born in 2001. Um, uh, our daughter, Tyra. And yeah. then, and she's not named after Tyra Banks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like Tyra Banks, though, so I had a good uh, kind of memory of her name. Yeah. Uh, but then I, um, I started working with Lindex. Mm -hmm. And that was actually... Some, you know, things happen sometimes that are quite strange. They call and they wanted me to do a, a photo Please. shoot. Yeah, okay. And I, I did the photo shoot in South Africa for two days. Mm -hmm. And they were in the middle of a big change. Lindex is a fashion company like H&M. I don't know, I guess everyone maybe knows which one it yeah, is. I think so. Um, so uh, I was on... A maternity leave mm -hmm. from no job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you say that? I can say that. I was only employed there with a kid. Um, and, and I got contacted by Linux, and I thought, great, I can do two days, you know, make some extra money, fabulous. And they, after that, asked me to become their like, spokesperson and the face of Lindex for two years. And that so it was a bit of like branding and modeling at the same time. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. And I have to say, when I was modeling, talking about branding, which is, if we want to talk about that, you know, be, when I started as a model, when you're a model, you're different, actually just a better form of a clothes hanger, no. someone told me. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you switch from different clients and you make advertising for, you know, if it's for shampoo or if it's for jeans or whatever, you switch from mm. different products all the time. And your job is to make them sell, of course, and look, make them look great. Mm. And then in Sweden in 1991, I did a huge campaign for milk, <laughs> mini milk. <laughs> and that was in 1992. And I lived in Paris, and it was a very personal campaign, which is much more focused on literally my life in Paris as a model, uh -huh. not on milk. <laughs> okay. So when I came home in 92, I was milk Emma milk, milk Emma, <laughs> milk Emma, with, with, with the, literally with the whole s Sweden. Sweden, okay. Because milk is a very popular <laughs> product in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> we still drink milk yeah. when we eat <laughs> dinner, you yeah. know. We have, and um, so I become Mjölk Emma. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and it's, I became famous, and it's a different thing, or famous name, uh, Emma Sjöberg, and if you know, being just a model when yeah. people don't know your name. And suddenly you become a name model yeah. <laughs> and I realized that I had the kind of the responsibility of what I would do or what I would wear or what I would do advertising for and I kind of experienced that from doing quite a stupid mistake <laughs> <laughs> or I, I you know I smoked at the time and yeah. in the States I, I did in 1992 a campaign for Virginia Slims mm -hmm. you know this like the, the Slim cigarettes, cigarettes. Yeah. and Sweden, they went bananas. <gasps> the milk Emma is yeah. actually doing advertising for cigarettes. It was a scandal. <laughs> and I kind of realized, oh my God, that actually what, you know, I have a responsibility of what I actually put my, what I put my face it's on or put my, on at this point became my name on. Um, so it, it was kind of shocking, but I had no idea that was, it was kind of building a brand, but I realized I had to... I mean, I decided early not to make advertising for fur. Yeah. Uh, for animal... Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I, because I didn't want to want 
to be the person selling it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not very uh, activist against people wearing fur, I think, you know, but I didn't want to be the, the person actually promoting uh, them promoting either. now. Yeah. So, so no cigarettes anymore as no well? No cigarettes, yeah? no fur. <laughs> but lots of milk. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask some people if they still call you Emma Milk. Uh, Mjölk Emma. Mjölk Emma. Mjölk Emma. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, you be, you started working for with Lindex for two years. Mm -hmm. And what happened after that? Well, actually, I got asked by the new owners to be on the board, mm -hmm. which was very surprising because I had a very different background than the normal average board member. Mm -hmm. um, it was Kiste Gadell, who was the quite known businessman here in Sweden. He called me and he, they, we were a couple of people that they had on the valberedning. They were the valberedning. What do you call that? Someone help us. Election committee. Election committee. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and then, of course, we decided from the beginning not to have certain like mineral oils. We don't use, we don't use parabens. Um, we don't work with plastic jars that are heavy to transport. We produce them in Sweden. So there's always a thing of, of, of course, the environment. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to fully ecological, it has happened a lot. It's becoming much, much better. Um, but I'm, I really want to do the skincare that I use myself, yeah. which means science and nature in a good combination and very safe ingredients. Yeah. I wanted to have a product that a skincare doctor could recommend, literally, like mm -hmm. a dermatologist. Mm. And uh, you started uh, which, with, with which product line? Is it the skin face? It started with face. face yeah. <laughs> we started with 12 products. Okay. So we did our homework and we built, founded the company in 2009. And parallel with finding, of course, you have to find, where do you start? First, you have to find a factory that mm -hmm. can develop <laughs> and produce your products. And that took like a year and a half, almost two years. And traveling around, meeting uh, with Swedish manufacturers mm -hmm. and developers, but also in Denmark and in Canada. No, sorry, not Canada, in, in, North, in America and in Switzerland. And we had contact with one in Canada. And in the end, we ended up with a Swedish, actually, okay. uh, producer and developer. Also because I'm not a chemist. Yeah. And when you develop products, you know, I don't know how to speak chemistry in English. <laughs> <laughs> I can only talk about... I want to know the ingredients, mm -hmm. and I want to explain the feeling and the effects, and I can also describe that in a much better way. Maybe I could do it in English today, but when we started, Sorry, yeah. I really wanted to be close to production. Yeah. So now we're three and a half hours from where we develop our products, mm -hmm. and also where we produce them, and we have the store. So it was a simple model also. Mm -hmm. so if you're going to start your company, don't make it too complicated. Mm -hmm. um, we looked for distribution parallel while we were developing because if you don't have distribution you're not going to make any money you have mm -hmm. to sell them somewhere and we contacted Oleans mm -hmm. and pre presented our idea and we got the distribution exclusively with them okay. and that's also good because then you keep the com complexity compli yeah. complexity yeah. not too complicated yeah you, you keep have, it simple. You keep it simple, so you can handle it. Because I was working, the only one working at the company full time. Because Nora has her other job. Okay. So literally, you have to do everything yourself. And when you do that, don't make it too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a lot of work anyway. Yeah. But now, how many people work at Skin? Uh, at MS? MS? Five. Five. Uh, <laughs> and Nora. Yeah. But um, but f we're five at the office. Right and you're the CEO. Yeah. I've seen you clean up shelf at, at Orleans. Is that part of your job yes. description? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> In a small company, a CEO sounds great. <laughs> In a small company, though, you do everything. Uh, we, I, you know, you cannot be, be a snob. <laughs> I don't like titles normally. If you have a... Um, at Aktie yeah. you need to have a CEO. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Um, <laughs> I um, I would not mind in a couple of years to you know have another CEO that can take your brand to the next step maybe because you shouldn't become. Uh, you don't want, you don't, maybe you don't want that role. I don't think uh, maybe I can do it, and I think that's the hard thing when you own your company to let go, but also realizing that you need someone to take it to the next step. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to be able to pay them <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to have a great person as well. And uh, 
So as long as I can stay, you know, I never worked that hard and made so little money in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that sounds like a typical founder, founder thing to say. I mean, I, it's not different in this world as well. No, I think anyone who's a startup or whatever knows also this, you work all the time. You never come home and literally stop thinking about work. <laughs> You have to practice that, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now we, uh, MIS is in Sweden, Norway? In Finland. In Finland? Yes. And where, where is your next target? Um, next target would be... I'm flirting with Denmark, but I'm afraid of Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, a lot of Swedish companies have quite bad experience with Denmark. Is yeah. it different? Uh, everyone is nodding here. Uh, yeah. Do you have experiences? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know Lindex never went to Denmark, <laughs> uh, and a lot, of, a lot of other companies. Maybe someone from Denmark here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> no, nothing against the Danes, but uh, when it comes to a lot of Swedish companies, they have difficulty making it there. Um, so I'm, but I think the uh, somewhere outside Scandinavia would be great, mm -hmm. and maybe the EU because we have the same regulatory system uh, rules. Yeah when it comes to our packaging and the ingredients and what you're supposed to have in. So if we go to the States, there would be... More complications. Um, yeah, I think so. Actually, we have tougher regulations in the EU, in mm -hmm. the EU than they have in the States, which is quite interesting. But um, for the transportation mm -hmm. and uh, being able to have a personal brand for me to travel, because even if you go to a different European country, I would love Germany. I can yeah. use my German a little bit, finally. But you could be there. You have to be present. Mm -hmm. And if you would launch in Australia, you know, it's kind of a long trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think you have to think differently also when you go with your personal brand outside a country. I'm happy that it works in Norway because mm -hmm. I'm not that known in Norway. And that was like a good tryout market for us. And, you know, you can always have a famous name to, and people get interested But if you don't have a good product, they're not going to come back. No. Never. Actually, they would love not to come back. <laughs> <laughs> they would love to say, oh, it's horrible. It doesn't work. Um, so I think you have to really have good products, of course. Mm -hmm. And then if you have that, you also still have to create the story. Mm -hmm. And the tech business, I mean, it's amazing <coughs> with the stories that you can create today. And using the social media yeah. is fantastic but you have we were discussing that earlier yeah. what, how to use it in the right way um, be, I mean I have an Instagram account for MIS mm -hmm. and then I have my personal Instagram account and I have like 25,000 followers on my personal <laughs> we have about two and a half <laughs> on MIS and the difference you know where, when where is the I don't talk too much about MIS on my personal because then people don't like it yeah so It's this balance. How do you use your social media and to make but, but to you're, create good value? <laughs> in your case, it's like you are the brand and also the influencer of the brand. So yeah. you need to have the two different accounts. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You, do you agree? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's a good thing. A good. A good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Before I start oh, uh, as, uh, asking uh, people to have questions, I want to mm. ask you a few more questions. The last part, it's a, a bit personal. Mm. And uh, it's 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 okay. It's, it's not, it's not <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> we usually what we aim with startup guide is to show to people who are here to uh, to listen to our rock stars is to show them that you are a human being after all, <laughs> and that if you can do it, they can also get inspiration to do it as well. Um, so I would like to know, like, what are the what was your the best day of your life? We start with the best. Not the I best. know. Um, I would say. I uh, know, you know, I have two beautiful kids. Yes. And it would, you know, the, the normal thing would be, oh, the day where they were born, you know, of course. But it was such a shock. <laughs> it was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> so that day, yeah. I wouldn't say, well, you know, it was the best day. But I would say, okay, let's not talk about the family. Let's outside of family. I would have to say the first time when it comes to a great day was actually the first time I saw No comparison to the kids now. I love my kids, but we talk about business. First time I held, saw the, the products yeah. in the Orleans shelf. I mean, I never forget that moment, you know, when you've been working on something for so three long. years. Yeah. 
and the packaging and the filling and the production and the creams and the and suddenly you're standing at Olean's. Mm. At this time, you know, we also were on the top floor <laughs> because they were exclusive, so we had great exposure. And I was like, I felt really proud. So business-wise, I think that was a great, great day. Um, and then um, comes... The worst. The worst. Of course. And I know, you know, that's got to be personal because my father passed away mm. very sudden, four years ago. Mm. And that was the worst day of my life. Because he, he was so alive and he passed away literally when we were celebrating my mom's 70th birthday on holiday in Thailand with all the family gathered. And it was just, I was at the office, I was supposed to travel down to Thailand and my sister called me and, you know, dad just passed away. He just died, you know, he was gone. That was tough. I'm sorry. That's okay. And I'm sorry, it's okay. It's always sensitive when we ask this question, I know. And I know. usually it's always the case, and mothers want to be happy on the best day of their life. I know. And the kids are <laughs> so I'm happy you said something different. I know. I, you know, I should have said, you know, Tira and Elis, they're great kids, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my S is my third kid. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who, who supports you in uh, your good days and your bad days? My husband. Your husband. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you know, we've been together for 16 years now, mm -hmm. and it's um, it, it's really amazing when you stay together that long because you become really good best friends, even if you have your everyday life and everything. But when horrible, tough things happen and and you really put each other to, to this comes to a test. Mm -hmm. And my mom, oh, yeah, mom. Yeah. yeah, have to mention my mom, of yeah. course. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, Emma, uh, I'm going to open the questions. We don't have a microphone. We didn't have a microphone. So you, if you, anyone has a question? I want to ask the obvious question for your skincare product because everyone knows that Sweden is a very traditional and conservative market. And women, they pick the product that they like, whether it's Biotherm or Clarins. So how did you convince these women to switch from what they were using for 10 years <laughs> to come to you? I think we worked a lot with PR. We, we couldn't afford traditional marketing, uh, advertising in magazines or television. So we worked a lot with PR. Um, and through PR, we could create story. And I could talk literally, I think it was also talking about the involvement. A lot of people thought that I only put my name on something that someone else owned, but I owned the company mm. and I invested in it. And you, when you do that and you can talk about that and also literally describe every ingredient and why you would use it. And people still ask me, do you use your own products? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they still think, you know, that of course I try a lot of other creams too because I'm a bit of a nerd. But yeah. I think that you have to, to be very honest. And um, so, as soon as you, if you don't believe in your product or your brand, 110%, no one else is going to believe you. And I think a lot of women know me from Mjölken <laughs> <laughs> and from Lindex. <laughs> and they know me through, through media, maybe, um, and interviews, and they kind of maybe have that relationship. And maybe they, you know, oh, I will try Emma. I, I think, she, and thank God, you know, they, they liked it. So I think it was, I think that is... That's why maybe I got a little bit of the bioterm woman too. <laughs> also, they saved some money <laughs> because they discovered a skincare brand that wasn't that expensive. <laughs> it worked. I'm working with developer, uh, uh, chemists, yeah. literally at my manufacturer. They have a developing space. And we develop every formula is unique for MIS because I really wanted to have, they have, of course, some ingredients that you know from other products, but I wanted the packaging, the formulas to be unique and I want it, you know, and we own the formulas, mm -hmm. which is really important because um, like this, it's not like I bought a cream, put yeah. my name on it that someone else is having. So that was very important also for me, knowing that every th this is an MIS cream. Yeah. It's not a Clinique cream yeah. <laughs> that I have different fragrance on or something. Um, so I'm really proud that we actually own our formulas and develop them ourselves. It takes about, from the idea from a new product, I'm working with one product right now. Mm -hmm. it, from the idea to have it literally in the packaging and in the shelf, it's about 18 months. So it's kind of a long process because you need to do a lot of stabilizing tests and um, mm -hmm. test it in the packaging and skin irritations tests. So to have safe products. So 
uh, yeah, it's it's the unique formulas. <laughs> Oh, ah. thank you. Well. <laughs> While you're working on your startup, uh, during this time, did you have uh, any hard times that made you think about quitting the, the brand or something like that? And how did you handle it? Um, once I, I think the decision to... If, when I was at Lindex and I just graduated with my EOM, and I, we were wor working on MS, developing the idea, literally. And to say to, I'm leaving Lindex, you know, that was a job. It was an income. I'm taking my savings and throwing them literally straight into a black hole that I don't know <laughs> where it's going to end. That was stressy. But once I decided I'm going for it, then um, I'm very focused. And I think it's because, you know, it's a personality thing. Whatever you do, you want to do it really, really well. Mm -hmm. And you focus really... But yes, there were times when I thought, what am I doing? I don't understand. I had nothing. I had no idea about logistics, um, packaging, uh, for uh, regulations, uh, nothing. So you have to be wanting to learn a lot of things. And I'm so happy. The first year was really, really tough. When we, when we developed the products. And every year that went now, mm -hmm. there are different new products, but now when I develop a new product, I know the process. The first time is always putting the process at place. And I think everyone is starting, you know, is finding your process or what do I have to do? What did I miss? <laughs> and you do miss some things. I remember our, do you want to hear a mistake? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun, one, one fun and one less fun, but our deodorant, we have a deodorant. Great product, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. <laughs> the biggest sales. The best seller? In amount or in value? <laughs> in, a, in, a, in the amount is our facial wash that everyone, everyone here is going to get with them today. Yeah, you agree. I'm gonna, I was going to ask. Oh. <laughs> it's a, a facial wash that works for men and women. <laughs> And it's, it's uh, not a makeup remover, really. So you work in the morning, you wash your face off and everything. And that one is our best-selling in amount, both in Sweden, Norway, and Finland, actually. Yeah. yeah, actually, thank you very much, because you had brought us some goodie bags, right? Yeah. Where, where do people get them? Ah, ah with them, I Yeah, I, I brought the goodie bag. It's the facial wash, uh, great for traveling as well. And no, you no, know, they can have it. They can see it. <laughs> and there's a little brochure if you want to read more about it in English. <laughs> and then it's a small test of the sensitive night cream. It's a fragrance-free night cream for dry and sensitive skin. Very good for Scandinavia and yeah. our wind, winter climate now. Yeah. And it has no fragrance, so uh, and it's blue, so whatever. You know, works for men and women. Yeah. And that's the right white, right? That's the right white. Yeah. Yeah. Emma White. <laughs> it has a Pantone color or whatever, but we call it the Emma White now. Okay, now from Emma Milk to Emma White. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Emma, uh, I will wrap up. So uh, it was fantastic having you here with us. I mean, from tech. Uh, uh, one more question I forgot. Wait, wait. wait. Oh. I always ask. Yeah. Do you have any favorite startups in, in, so in Sweden, Stockholm or Sweden? Startups? Yeah, startups like tech, tech, uh, like apps, uh, stuff that you use. You know. I won't say Spotify. Um, <laughs> I know one uh, uh, that I use a lot. It's very sure. Yeah. Do you know very sure? Very sure. No. Anyone? <laughs> okay, a, what does it do? It's, uh, it's alarm. Yeah. <laughs> so much. And good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.